There we go. All right, this is uh, 511 and 512 in Math 1. Uh, we're talking about traps and kites, which are the last two quadrilaterals, right? Everything we've talked about so far has been a quadrilateral, okay? We talked about parallelograms, right? And underneath parallelograms, you've got rectangles and rhombuses, and then a rectangle and a rhombus is called a what? Square. 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 All right. We got to do that one. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is that chart that's in 512, and it helps us organize it. Every single thing we've talked about is a quadrilateral, meaning it has four sides. What's another property of every quadrilateral? Yes? The external add up to 360. External add up to 360. And on quadrilaterals, the... Internals also add up to 360. Okay, so every single thing that you see here today is a quadrilateral and they have those properties. We're going to talk about two things that are not parallelograms today. We're going to talk about a kite, okay, uh, which looks as you think it would look, right? Some people think it looks like a shield. Most people say it's a kite, okay. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about a trapezoid. A special kind of trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid, okay? So those two things exist outside of parallelograms. They are not parallelograms, okay? Any questions about that? That chart on 512 does a good job of organizing that information, okay? All right, now let's talk about trapezoids. I'm going to have to erase this. Everybody got this? It's in your yes. book. But, all right. So now let's talk about trapezoids. Um, I say traps for short. E Z O I D, is that right? Trapezoid? Yes. All right. Most people think of a trapezoid like this. You would say that's kind of the standard drawing of a trapezoid. They don't all have to look like that, but that's kind of your standard drawing of a trapezoid. Mackenzie, read out the definition there, uh, the top on 511 of a, of a trapezoid. Read it out nice and loud and slow. A All right, stop right, stop right there. What is the most important word in that sentence? One pair. No. One pair of pair. Exactly. Exactly one pair of parallel sides. What does it mean exactly? Does it mean one or more? No. Does it mean less than one? No. It means exactly one. Yes. You can only have one side be parallel and it be a trapezoid. How many? Exactly one. Because if both of them are parallel, then what do you have? You have a tra uh, I mean, you have a uh, parallelogram, not a trapezoid. Okay. So that is the definition. Read it one more time from the beginning. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Stop right there. So it is a quadrilateral, meaning four sides, and it has exactly one. Uh, pair of parallel sides. Okay? Keep reading. What does it say? Finish that out. The parallel sides are the bases for uh -huh. each of the bases of a trapezoid. There is a pair of base angles, which are the two angles that have the base as a side. I'm just abbreviating. You can get the idea. <coughs> these are base angles, and these are base angles. Okay? What else does it say? I think the next sentence. So talk about legs somewhere in there? All right, read the next one. The non-parallel sides of a trapezoid are the legs of the trapezoid. If the legs of a trapezoid are congruent, then the trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid. All right. Isosceles. Is that right? Did I spell that right? Isosceles. Right here. Yes. All right. Isosceles. Isosceles trapezoids only exist when the legs are congruent. If the legs are congruent, we say it's an isosceles trapezoid. What else is isosceles? Um, a triangle. A triangle can be isosceles if those two sides are congruent. Okay. Here's a question. What other figure in geometry has legs on it? What kind of triangle? Uh, right triangle. A right triangle. Right triangle. Because this triangle doesn't. Nope. Right? But if it is a right triangle, then we have leg, leg, and uh, hypotenuse. hypotenuse. Okay? 
So we talked about legs, we talked about base angles, we got into a little bit of a definition of isosceles trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid are where the legs are congruent. Okay, read that second part there again for me. Make sure I hit it off. Um, the non-parallel sides of a trapezoid are the legs of the trapezoid. If the legs of the trapezoid are congruent, then the trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid. The mid-segment of a trapezoid... All right, hold on right there. So I don't want to get into mid-segment yet. Any questions on this? This is just kind of terminology. All right, skip mid-segment and come down to the next line, and we talk about... Uh, kite. It, oh, it goes into kite? Well, come on down to where we talk about an isosceles trapezoid, love it. We've got some properties. I think it's the theorem. There we go. Let's talk about the theorem. All right? Let's read the first theorem on a trapezoid. Okay. If a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles is congruent. All right, so if this, right, if we know this, then we know what? That the angles here and here are congruent. Okay, if it's an isosceles triangle, then we know that that base angle is equal to that base angle. What else do we know? How about the ones at the top? Do we know that? Mm -hmm. Yes. This angle here is congruent to this angle. Okay, by that theorem. Read the theorem again. If a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles is congruent. All right. Then we have the next theorem, which is the flip side of that, right? The converse. Okay, read it. It says if a trapezoid has a pair of congruent base angles, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. Then it is isosceles, meaning that and that have to be congruent. So they're, they're the same theorem. And it's saying if I know the legs are congruent, then I know that these base angles and these base angles are congruent. And on the flip side of that, if I know that the base angles are congruent, then I know the legs are congruent. They go hand in hand. Mackenzie, did you have a question? So if you only know that one pair of base angles like That's all you need. Read it again. Read the theorem again, love it. Let's make sure. The, if, which one? That the uh, base angle. The second one. If a trapezoid has a pair of congruent base angles, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. And I made her read it again to make sure that it said a pair, meaning all you have to do is have one pair. Okay? Good question. All right, I got a question for you. Is this a trapezoid? Yep. Mm. Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. 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 Y
or an isosceles trapezoid, they are the diagonals are congruent. Okay? Is that it? I think that's all the special properties. Isn't it, love it? Now we got to talk about midsection. All right, so now let's talk about midsection. Read out the uh, definition there. The mid segment of a trapezoid is the segment that connects the midpoint of the plane. All right, so let's talk about mid segment. In the beginning of chapter 5, back in 5 1, we talked about mid segment of a triangle. Anybody tell me what, what that is? What do we do? Very good. That and that have to be congruent, meaning midpoint. And that and that have to be congruent, meaning midpoint. Now, if I connect them, then I get the mid-segment of a triangle. What are its two properties? It's, it's half the third side. Meaning 5 and 10. And it's parallel. To and it's parallel. parallel. Outstanding. Those are the properties of a triangle mid-segment. All right, so now let's talk about the mid-segment of a trapezoid. What's the definition again? Read it again. The segment that connects the midpoints of its length. So there and there. Right? I connect it over here, and that and that have to be congruent. Okay? And it has two properties. What are its properties? Number one, that it is what? Parallel, Parallel, Parallel to the top and bottom. Right. Those are called what? I'm sorry. No, no, no you, you're right. The bases. They're the bases. Yeah. So this is parallel to this, is parallel to this. All three of those are parallel. And that gives us a lot of angles, okay, that are the same. Okay? The, the base and the base and the mid-segment are all parallel. Okay, that's the first property. The second property deals with length. Okay, let's talk about the length. Denson, read, read there in that little theorem there. What does it talk about length there? It tells us that the mid-segment is something in relation to the base. The mid-segment mid of a trapezoid is parallel to each base, and its length is one-half the sum of the length of the base. One-half the sum. What is one-half the sum? Well, isn't it the same as the sum divided by two? Yeah. Isn't that basically the average? If you only have two things, yeah. that's the average. So if this one is 10 and this one is 20, can't we find the average of those two numbers to tell me the length of the mid-segment? Mm -hmm. What would it be? 15. It would be 15. 10 plus 20 is 30. 30 divided by 2 is 15. 15 is the length of the mid-segment. All right, here's a question. How much did you increase from 10 to 15? 5. Five. Five. How much did you increase from 15 to 20? 5. Five. Will that always be the case? No. Yes. 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 If this is 4 and this is 8, can you tell me what X would be? Yeah. 12. 12. How'd you get that? Four. Four. Everybody's eyes should be up here. David Lloyd, come on, sit up. X equals 12. Why? Because you increased by 4. You have to increase by 4 again. All right, let's do another one. Uh, let's say 18 and 21. What would Y be if the bases are 18 and 21? 20. Uh, not 20. 19.5. Is it okay to have a decimal? Yes. Huh. If you get an odd number and divide by 2, you're going to have a decimal. 19.5. No big deal. All right, we got one more to do. How about 11 and 8 and Z? What would Z be? be 5. Right? You decreased by 3. You decreased by 3, and then you have to decrease by 3 again. Okay? So there's four examples you need to copy down in your notes on mid -second. Yes? I'm saying 11 minus 8. That distance is 3. So that means that that distance from there to there has got to be 3, and Z equals 5. Okay? Uh, what would it be this time? Uh, you see, Nash? We decreased by 8. I'm going to decrease by 8 again. All right. What would it be now? Oh, I can't 
meant for that. Is that the same one up there? No. Yeah. You understand? All right, let's try one more. What would it be now? Um, Nineteen. Because I increased by eight, I would have to increase by eight again. It's nineteen. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's it on mid segment. They love mid segment. You're gonna have a lot of problems on mid segment. Now we have to talk about what kite. kite the very last one. Okay. Read out, boy, the de uh, the definition of a kite, nice and loud. <coughs> Mm, that's a theorem. That's not the definition. Come on up. It's higher up. Okay. All right. How is that different from a parallelogram? Here's a parallelogram, remember. And that and that have to be congruent. And that and that have to be congruent. We say opposite sides are congruent. Right? That's a parallelogram. How is a kite different? Read it again, nice and loud. A kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs instead of the congruent sides, the opposite sides are not congruent. What's the most important word in that definition? Parallel. Opposite. 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 Consecutive. Consecutive. These are opposite congruent sides. These, we have to talk about consecutive. What does it mean to be consecutive? One, One next to it. Right. right next to it. So this side is consecutive to this side, and they are congruent. It says you have two pairs, so that means that this side has to be congruent to this side. That's the definition of a kite. Now that we've drawn it, read it one more time. I know this is the third time, but read it one more time for me. All right, so there's a but in there. Read the but part again. Opposite sides are what? No. Not congruent. Not congruent. Well, is this congruent to this? No. No, it's not. Is this congruent to this? No. no, it's not. Because if it was, what would it be? A It'd be a parallelogram. You'd have a parallelogram because that's one of your ways to prove that a parallelogram or that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay? So that's a kite. Uh, some people say it looks like a shield. Okay? Um, we have two properties that go with kites. Uh, read the first one for me, Savannah. Nice and loud. If a quadrilateral, quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are congruent to the diagonals. All right. So put a plus sign right there in the middle. All right. Draw your diagonals and put the boxes there. That means all four of those are right angles. Well, what does that open up? When we have right angles, what do we have there? We have right triangles. Right. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. David, sit up, please. All the way up. We have right triangles. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. If I told you that this one was 3 and this one was 4 and this one was 4, what would these two have to be? 5. 5 and 5 because you have a right triangle there. Does everybody see that triangle? 3, 4, 5? Does everybody see the triangle there? 3, 4, 5? Could you use the Pythagorean theorem there? Yes. Yeah, what would it be? If Let's say you didn't know the triple. Let me erase. Let's say you didn't know the triple. What, what would the cheater way of the uh, Pythagorean theorem be? The square root of what? Four, three, four squared. Three squared. Three squared plus four squared. Plus four squared. Plus four squared. No. You do that on your calculator, you get five. Okay? Let's say that this one down here is eight. Everybody get your calculator out and practice. Find this missing hypotenuse. Find the missing hypotenuse there. You tell me. You have to visualize it. Look at the triangle. You've got one leg right here, and you've got one leg right here, and we're finding that hypotenuse of that right triangle. So it'd be the square root of Emilio. What would I type in? Uh, <coughs> four squared minus eight squared. Is that right? Why would it be minus? Because that's a leg. You're trying to find the yeah, not minus. You're trying to find the hypotenuse. It's always plus in the middle, and you knew that. I got that. All right. Yeah. Okay, good. So what's your answer, Amelia? Uh, I got four, uh, four, uh, four square root five. Four root five. And if we rounded like money, what would that be? Uh, eight, nine, 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 four. Nine, How much? Eight, nine. 
Eight point nine four. 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 With my cheater way and these calculators, you should be able to do that no problem. Yes, ma'am. Say that again. Uh, unless the directions say differently. Here's a question. If this hypotenuse over here is 4 root 5, then what's this one over here? Do we have to do it again on our calculator? No, no because 2 slashes and 2 slashes means that it has to be the same. It, excuse me, this side over here is 4 root 5 as well. All right, the diagonals are perpendicular. That's that property. What other parallelogram over there does shares that property? Rhombus. Rhombus. Write that down. Rhombuses and kites. The diagonals are perpendicular. That needs to be a note card. That could be a note card for five twelve, because it's difficult to get ten note cards out of five twelve. Right. Isosceles, trapezoids, and rectangles, the diagonals are congruent. Kites and rhombuses, the diagonals are perpendicular. Make those, uh, make those connections, okay? That's important. All right, we got one last property to talk about. Love it. What is it? If a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. All right, so how are they going to give us some problems that look like this? They are going to draw a kite. Well, first, let's talk about the definition. Read it again. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. A, B, C, D. It's telling us that two of those are congruent. Which ones are they? B, D. Which angles are congruent? The, uh, diagonal. Which ones? B, B. A and B, are they congruent? Yes. No. How about B and D, are they congruent? Yes. Could be. It's A and B and C and B, and B and C and A and B. Only one pair. Which ones are they? A and C are congruent. Write that down. Angle A would be congruent to angle C. Angle A would be congruent to angle C. Now, how are you going to remember that? How do you know that A and C are congruent and not B and D? There's a way. What's true about A and C? A is in between one slash and two slashes. C is in between one slash and two slashes. It's kind of the included angle. A will always equal C. Because watch, if I draw like a shield, it's obvious that this and this have to be congruent. And oh, okay. this one here, say 20, and this one down here, one's, and then this one would be... If that one, this one would be like 120, and this one might be 30. Okay, what do all four angles have to add up to? 180. Not 180. 360. Not 180. 360. Why? Because it's a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral. Four and five. All right, so how are we going to do a problem? Try this one. Find X. Copy this down in your notes. How are you going to find X? I only gave you two angles. Because the other one. Do you know one angle that they didn't tell you? Which one? You know that this angle, across from this one, that these two have to be equal. That that one and that one have to be equal. So now if I know 40 and 40 and 80, that's 160. What does this one down here have to be? 360 minus 80 minus 80. Isn't that 200? Yeah. Now, it doesn't look like 200, but you get the idea. Wait, where'd you get minus 80 minus 80? Minus 80 and minus 80. Just add these two up. Oh, I get 360 minus 80 minus 40. Is that better? No, I did 80 plus 40 plus 40, and then I subtracted that from 60. Same thing. All right, any questions?